What's up everyone, Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding. Welcome to my brand new kitchen. I'm super excited to have you here because today I am covering the one most important thing you need to be doing with your nutrition. Stop making this mistake and you're gonna have so much more success in 2022. So what is that one thing that I'm talking about? Well, I've done a lot of reflection over the past couple months because we are coming into a new year and I know that you, as well as many of my clients and athletes, are looking for ways that they can improve their nutrition. And if there's something that every single person that I know that has a good grasp on how to maintain good nutritional habits year round, the one thing that they do better than most other people is they know how to get in their protein every single day. Yep, it's that simple. You're thinking, Marcus, it's just protein. What, a, you know, what about all the other macros, all the other nutrients? How am I supposed to count my numbers? And how am I supposed to be in a deficit? Five, seven, eight percent deficit, whatever. Don't overcomplicate it. See, why is protein so important? Protein increases metabolism. It increases the likelihood that you're gonna hold on to your lean muscle mass, which is where your metabolic engine is derived from. Protein, when you eat it early on in the day, it's gonna decrease your appetite. It's gonna reduce the number of cravings that you have. It is the one thing that if you do it correctly, can help you avoid all of the pitfalls that most people fall into with their nutrition. So why is it even something to talk about? It's so simple because it's not easy for many of you to get in your protein every day. And the reason is all the processed food, all the convenient food, all of the food at the restaurants and at the convenience stores and at the grocery stores and that are on the counters that are in the breakfast aisle at the buffet, they're full of carbohydrates and fat. They're not full of protein. Protein is not a convenient, quick, grab-and-go macronutrient unless you know how to plan for it and unless you know how to arm yourself in your kitchen with great protein options. See, that's what I'm here today to talk to you about. How can we prepare protein so that it is as easy to grab as anything else in your kitchen? Need something quick to eat? Protein should be the first option that you can grab. If it's not there, you're gonna be reaching for snacks with carbs, reaching for snacks with sugars, processed refined carbohydrates and fats, which are gonna to lead to problems. So that's what we're talking about today. And I want you to see how seriously we take our protein here at the house. I'm gonna show you three ways to prepare protein in bulk so that you can store it in your fridge and have it ready to go at all, at all times. But even if we don't have protein prepared in the house. I always have at least three options of protein that require zero prep, that I can literally grab out of the pantry and eat and I can get 30 to 50 grams of protein like that. Come check it out. This is my protein pantry. I pulled everything out that I've got that requires no preparation or minimal preparation to get great quality protein. The first thing, I've got some Biltong. Think of it as beef jerky without the sugar. Grass-fed, high quality. This, I can grab out of the pantry and I'm gonna get in this one packet 60 grams of protein. I've also got some deli meats. In this case, salami. My daughters love salami, they'll eat this. I've got a grass-fed cheese. Three to five ounces of this gives me a great protein whack right away. I've got two other types of dairy. I've got full fat cottage cheese and full fat Greek yogurt. Both of these are really high in protein, lower on the carbohydrate spectrum. Yeah, you're thinking eggs. Well, I've got hard boiled eggs. We've got a dozen and for good measure, my daughter's colored them. Hard boiled eggs in your fridge, boil a dozen of these every week, have them ready to go, super, super simple. What are all these bags, Marcus? You got chips? Nope. These are pork rinds, okay? This is pork skins fried. 
And the ingredients are simple, pork skin, pork fat. Right here in this bag, I can get 50 grams of protein and only 20 to 25 grams of fat. It's a relatively lean source of protein. They taste great and it's great texture. Moving on, we've got canned sardines. Okay, you might not have a taste for sardines, but you can pick up canned tuna or canned salmon. This is easy to get another 40 to 50 grams of protein by just cracking open a can. And then these over here, these require a little bit of heating up, but these are fully cooked scallops and shrimp. Straight from the store, throw them in a pan, heat them up, they are ready to go. In less than two minutes, you can have great protein sources. So like I said, getting protein is so vital to a good nutritional approach for 2022. Having these things on hand is key. But let's say you've got a little bit more time, you wanna do some planning, and you wanna get some more variety and cooked food into your diet. I'm gonna show you today three ways to approach bulk protein prep stored in your fridge so that you're set for the rest of the week. Let's do it. All right, we're starting off with something pretty simple in terms of cooking methods and that is baking. We're gonna use the oven. And when we use the oven, you wanna have baking trays. We're doing chicken and potatoes. This is a very simple meal. We're gonna focus on the bulk prep of these chicken breasts and I've cut them into smaller pieces and I'll show you in a second. But basically, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I've got these two baking sheets, both lined with parchment paper. And what I like about this prep method is that once you get it set and in the oven, you really don't have to do too much. You can kind of let, like set it and forget it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Set it and forget it. And it's gonna come out pretty evenly cooked. So for the prep of the chicken, I started out with two pounds of chicken breasts. There's actually a mix of chicken tenders and chicken breasts. Organic chicken meat that I got from Costco and from ButcherBox, it's a combination. And I cut them into pieces about this size. Then I actually put them into this bowl and I've been marinating this for about an hour. You can do a 30 minute marinade or an overnight marinade. My marinade is super simple. It's avocado oil, tamari, balsamic vinegar. That trio makes for salty, sweet, and then for a little bit of spice, I have a dash of cayenne pepper in there. So I'll take these out and I'll layer them onto the plate. And then for the potatoes, all I did was I took about six russet potatoes, organic russet potatoes, peeled them, chopped them, Toss them in a little bit of the same avocado oil, a little bit of salt, and now I've got my two trays, all right? And they're heading into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes each. I'm gonna check the chicken periodically, about every 10 minutes, to see how the doneness is. And as soon as it's cooked, I'm gonna pull them. The potatoes might take a little bit longer. Okay, so we just put the chicken and the potatoes in the oven. I chose about two pounds of meat. You could go with three pounds of meat. The idea is that I want you picking an amount that's gonna last for two to three, possibly even four days for yourself. So if you're gonna eat a half a pound of meat at a single meal or a pound of meat in a day, then two to three pounds might last you three to four days, and that's ideal. So you can get dinner for two to three days in a row and not have to worry about it. This next preparation, the Philly frittata, I have shown a number of times on the channel. I'm gonna show it again today so that you can better understand what I'm doing to make this a staple in the breakfast category for getting protein early on in the day. This is gonna make about three servings of breakfast for myself or for somebody else, and it stores great in the refrigerator, and it's super easy to make and very, very delicious and versatile. What I mean by versatile is that all you need to make this is kind of three to four main ingredients. You're gonna want eggs. You're gonna want a meat. I chose bacon today. Cheese, optional as a topping. I like some Parmigiano Reggiano and then a vegetable that you enjoy. Something like onion, maybe you want spinach, maybe you wanna put butternut squash in. 
you can try a bunch of different things and find a flavor profile that works for you. So to get things started, what I'll typically do is over a medium high heat pan, and I like to choose a cast iron pan or something that you can put right into the oven because this is gonna start on the stovetop and finish in the oven. So you wanna make sure that it's an oven safe pan. Non-stick pans might not be the best option for this. So I'm gonna take my meat, in this case, the bacon, and we're gonna cook off the bacon. And I'll talk you through the steps. While the bacon is browning, we're gonna get that brown and cooked. Once it's cooked, I'll take it out of the pan. Then I'll use the cooking, or excuse me, the the fat from the bacon to cook the rest of my onions. I'll get those onions really, really soft. I'll put the bacon back in. Then I'll pour in the eggs. I'll stir it around, cheese on top, and right into the oven. It's a pretty simple five to 10 minute stovetop process. Finish it in the oven for an additional 10 minutes, and you've got eggs and frittata for two to three, maybe even four meals, depending on how big a serving size you wanna have. Today I'm making one dozen eggs, I've got a half a pound of bacon, I've got one whole red onion, and about three ounces of cheese. Okay, so far we've got two methods going on. We've got baked chicken breasts and chicken tenders. We have got a Philly frittata, an egg dish, which is going on the stovetop. And now I'm gonna show you the simplest of all three protein prep concepts. That protein prep concept is ground meat. Specifically today, I'm doing grass-fed ground beef. Now, I know what you might be thinking, which is, wow, that's so simple, it's gonna be bland, it's gonna be boring. And what I want you to think about when it comes to getting in your protein is that when you're eating protein, it doesn't have to be super exciting and incredibly over the top with flavors and sauces and recipes. Something very simple can go a long way to help keep you on track with your nutrition goals. So ground meat is one of the simplest and easiest ways to get in a good source of protein to start your day. And in this case, I always like to have about two pounds of ground beef or ground meat in the fridge ready to cook and I'll cook it every two to three days and I'll store it again in a glass airtight container so it's gonna stay fresh and I can reheat it and I can compose a meal very quickly. So simple as this, we're gonna turn on the pan to medium high. This is two pounds, like I said before, two pounds of meat and I'm gonna take it and I'm going right into this nonstick pan. I'm gonna break it up a little bit, just get it in there. Make sure it's spread evenly. And then the one technique tip that I have is that when we're cooking ground meat, the more contact it has with the pan, the more browning it's gonna get. And browning is gonna add flavor to your meat. So I'll take it like this, and I might even push it down into the pan so that I can get more contact with the meat and the surface of the skillet. I keep seasoning very simple. I'm just gonna go with some sea salt on there and then I'm just gonna let it start to cook. And in a couple minutes, it'll start to sweat and you'll start to see some moisture on the top. That tells me that it's ready to be flipped or just minced up into ground beef. All right, we got our bacon bits ground up, uh, browned up and they're ready, pulled off to the side in a bowl. And now I've got a hot pan with about 50% of the oil from the bacon. And I'm gonna put this whole entire onion in there. And I'm gonna make sure to keep pushing it around so that it doesn't get too brown. It just starts to become soft. Now the bacon was salty, so there's already a bit of salt in the pan, but it's always a good idea to Salt each of your ingredients as you go. So in this frittata, I put the bacon in, cooked it, pulled it out, a little bit of the salt, a little bit of the bacon fat in there, put the onions in, and now added a touch of sea salt. Now I'm gonna let that cook for a bit. Once those onions are looking completely soft and starting to show a little signs of color, the bacon's going back in, 12 eggs are going in, and I'm gonna stir it up before it goes back into the oven, or goes into the oven for the first time.
Okay, we just wrapped up making ground beef. Not super groundbreaking, but what I wanna show you now is how do I take two pounds of ground beef and compose a meal out of it? Well, first off, here's my ground beef that I've got, and I'm certainly not gonna eat all that in one sitting. So what I would do with that ground beef is I would put it in a glass container. We have these from Pyrex. We choose to get the glass tops as well and they have a nice seal on them. So this is gonna remain airtight and we're not gonna be introducing a lot of plastics to our food. So I've got this glass container, the lid pops off, I can crack it a little bit. If I wanna reheat it, I'm okay with using the microwave. I could reheat some food in the air fryer or put it back on the stove top. Those are the options that I have, but I'll keep my meat in here. So to make a meal, it's pretty simple. I would take some of my meat and I'd put it on the plate. If you're wanting to weigh this stuff, you can, but the idea is get about a fist, a fist size of protein or two fist size of protein on your plate. Next up, I'm gonna add some fat. I like avocado. This fruit is wonderful, tastes good, is creamy, it's delicious. I would take a half of an avocado and scoop it right onto my plate. So I've got a little bit of fat on my plate. I'm also gonna take this vegetable, which is just cucumbers. I'm gonna make a cucumber salad. So I just diced up some cucumbers, that goes onto the plate, fill up the other one third of the plate with the vegetable, and now it needs a little bit of dressing. So I made this super quick dressing, and I could have made this entire jar full and kept it in the refrigerator for up to a month. What does it take? Vinegar, apple cider, olive oil, extra virgin, a little bit of spicy mustard, and then fresh dried dill. Dill goes really well with cucumber and it's very common in like a cucumber salad. So dill was the herb that I used. I mixed it up, about a tablespoon of this, about one part of vinegar to two parts olive oil, and then I just squeeze a little bit of black pepper on top. And from here, I could take this, drizzle it right onto my cucumbers. And literally, if I had prepped this meat in the fridge, I had some ripe avocados, I had these cucumbers handy, maybe I chop a bunch of cucumbers at the beginning of the week, this meal, which is very well balanced of carbohydrates, protein, fat, got vegetables, we got raw, we've got cooked food. All of that takes no more than two to three minutes to put together, and that's what I'm talking about. When you're hungry and you need something quick, you should be able to reach in and build a plate of food around a protein. So that's how I'm gonna take the ground beef and compose a meal out of it. Next up, I'll show you how I do that with the frittata, and finally, the chicken and potatoes. Nate, my cameraman, just said something. He said, man, it's pretty simple once you got it all cooked and just ready to go. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing today. This bulk prep concept makes making meals super fast and easy and straightforward. Right now, I'm gonna plate up the chicken dish, right? So I've got two pounds of this baked chicken, which came out great. You can see the marinade and all those flavors are still on the chicken. So if you think chicken breast is bland, try this marinade, it's gonna be killer. I'll take maybe three or four of these pieces, toss them on the plate. Then I'm gonna take some of these roasted potatoes, drop them right on to the plate. And then I just grabbed an apple. I've got all of this fresh fruit that I always have on hand. Kids love it, we love it. Sliced up an apple and there you go. This is a great meal for, let's say you just finished your workout, it's lunchtime, and you wanna get protein and carbohydrates because you just did a really tough conditioning workout and you, you, know, you earned those carbs, so to speak. Well, here they are. You've got potatoes, an apple, and these chicken breasts. 
high protein, high carb, pretty low in fat. If you wanted to add some fat, my recommendation would be to get some olive oil, drizzle it on the potatoes, or maybe a little bit of butter, melt it, put those on the potatoes. It's gonna add a little bit of extra calories if you need them, a little bit of extra fat if you're trying to add that to your diet. But here again is a perfect meal that you can construct so long as you have your protein prepped and you can build a meal around that protein. How do I get some protein in for breakfast? That's where the Philly frittata comes in. And we just wrapped up pulling it out of the oven. I burned myself a little bit. The pan's super hot. Make sure you got a good uh, mitt on your hand before you do that. But here's the frittata. And here's the slice that I pulled out. So depending again on the serving size that you're gonna need to have, right? Remember there were 12 eggs in here and a half a pound of bacon. So you can determine how many eggs you wanna have for breakfast. If you wanna have three eggs for breakfast and you know, a baby, a slice or two of bacon, then that looks like one quarter of the whole frittata. That means you've got four servings. Maybe it's four days of breakfast. Maybe you cut it into thirds. Maybe like me, you would just cut it in half and eat half the thing and have six eggs for breakfast. But I got my frittata. I've got a few carrots. And then I might drop a couple, a couple oranges onto the plate or pick another fruit that you like. This is a great way to start the day. It's got a great dose of protein. It's got a little bit of raw vegetables, carrots. It's got some fresh fruit, not super high in sugar. This is gonna help me maintain you know, good clarity in my, in my head. I'm not gonna get this massive spike of insulin and blood sugar from eating something like a big old bowl of oatmeal or something that's really carb heavy. So this is protein heavy. And if I wanna add a little bit of protein to this, remember what I showed you at the beginning, I got my pantry full of easy grab and go protein options. I might throw a cup of Greek yogurt on the side of this and that would make a great protein option for your breakfast. Okay, we just wrapped it up. Those are the three protein prep methods that you can use to get your 2022 started the right way. We've got using the pan to do ground meat. We've got using the oven to do baked chicken or another baked cut of meat that you like. And then we've got the pan to make a Philly frittata, uh, which can have any amount of ingredients in it that you'd like. It could be all vegetables. It could be meat and vegetables. It could be meat and eggs and cheese. You get to decide, but the method and the cooking approach is the same. And with each of these, I've got at least three, possibly four days of protein for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What I want to draw your attention to is that when I look at how I composed the actual plates of food, I'm thinking about getting minimally processed whole ingredients on the plate. There's nothing here that's processed. We got potatoes that we made, we've got fruits, we've got vegetables, we've got high quality meats that are organic, grass fed, pastured eggs, etc. Everything on this plate is real. And if you're asking the question, hey, there's a lot of animal products on there, there's a lot of meat, I can't eat that, I prefer to eat uh, less meat products, I know a lot of you are influenced by the movement around eating more plant-based foods that are out there, and a lot of talk about how animal-based foods are problematic. And I encourage you to go and investigate that and really get to the source of who is saying that and why they're saying that. Most of what I'm seeing out there and the benefits that people are reporting from eating more plant-based foods is that that has ch made them choose less processed, more whole food ingredients and getting away from processed sugars, processed refined packaged products that you buy in the store that don't look anything like real food. Getting away from that is a win no matter which choice you make in terms of the type of food that you eat. So if you say, I'm going plant-based and that makes you get rid of all the processed crap, of course you're gonna feel better. So again, when you look at these plates of food, yeah, there's meat on there. Yeah, there's produce on there. We got plants and animals all in harmony on these plates. But the key thing that we're avoiding is processed crap, is sugar, is refined seed oils the things that are adding to all of the health and aesthetic issues that you're likely having. So 
My point today is that protein of all the macronutrients is the one I want you to build your meals around. If you build your meals around protein, I almost promise you, you will see improvement in just about every aspect of health, aesthetic, and performance that you're looking for. These are the ways that I do it. I hope it helps you to prepare and be ready when the hunger cues signal to have something quality, healthy, and high protein to reach for. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comments. If you like this video and you got something from it, please, please hit the like button, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel so you can get more nutrition tips as we bring them to you from this awesome new kitchen. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. All right.